Hey, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast Ministry here of the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We have been having such a great time on our podcast. We've been gathering weekly as we are doing a recap of our previous weekend's message. Uh, if you didn't know, we are in a ser- sermon series here at The Rock called Your World Series, where we're talking about everything that has to do with your world. And we're kicking off this series with a mini-series on marriage. The first two weeks, Pastor Dan was with us and did the commandments that we see in Scripture to the husband. And this past weekend, we had a special treat. Pastor Jessica was with us as she went over the commandments to the women. So, Pastor Jessica, what is up? Hey, how how are are you? you? Cool. It's good to be back on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to uh, get right into it because there's so much. You did a great job this weekend. It was such a rich word. And I, I felt like it didn't, although it was commandments to the wife, I was busy writing lots of notes because it was a lot of challenging and conviction mm-hmm. and call to more for all of us. Right. And so I really appreciated that. But I want to start off by reading some of the base scripture that we uh, have been reading out of in this series. And right off the top, Ephesians chapter 5. Again, we did the later verses as we mm-hmm. went over the commandments to the husband. Uh, but here we find in Ephesians 5, 22, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Verse 24, Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be, their own hus- be to their own husbands in everything. And the thing is, this is Scripture. You know, so that you took these thoughts right from Scripture. This isn't... Well, yeah. let me just tell you how, how to have a winning message. No. We're hearing it right from the Word of God. Right. And uh, it was so great. So I don't want to recap the whole message, Pastor Jess. Uh, yeah, they got to go back and yeah, hear it. No, we want it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're right here on the YouTube channel. They're right on the podcast. Make sure you're hearing. This is just a supplement to the weekend message. So make sure you're checking out the weekend message. And then we're just going to try to break down and pull out some of these nuggets yeah. uh, that we feel that you guys will, that will really help you in practically living these things out because that's the desire. Um, But right off the top, the first one, submit to your own husband. Now, there goes the big submit word. Uh, Maybe talk, walk us through, Pastor Jess, some of the nuances and some of the challenges that you've had to walk women through when it comes to this word and why it's not the bad word that maybe it's been made out to be. Not at all. Um, The saddest part of how Satan has worked on earth is he has skewed the things that God actually created to be beautiful. And he twists words like submit Mm -hmm. and makes them a negative thing instead of it actually being the truth of what it is, which is a very powerful Mm -hmm. position that we get to be in. And I, in the message, was really relating it with us as the church being the bride and Jesus being the groom. And if we look at marriage in that sense, then what we are learning in marriage, we are actually learning as Christians for our walk with Christ. If I, as a wife, can understand submission, I then, I, as a Christian, can understand submission to Christ. And I think that's a massive part of our Christian walk. Mm -hmm. And so I know submission can seem very negative. The world does a very good job at you won't control me, I'm yeah. nobody's, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, kicking stand yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. people yeah. would say about it. But the reality is that's not what submission is. Submission is a beautiful thing. I, I think my favorite part of the definition is to come under one's mission. Mm-hmm. So when I am in a team and a partnership with Christ, then I'm on Christ's mission. My life has yeah. a purpose. No matter what happens in my life, no matter who ends up in my life and who doesn't end up Mm -hmm. in my life, no matter what rejections I experience or what jobs fail or what schooling education I don't win in or fail in or whatever, whatever circumstances come my way, I'm going to win because I'm in Christ. And so I've learned that. And so here's marriage. Now you're, a part, you're in partnership. You've said yes to each other. Mm-hmm. You, you've said before God, this is what we're doing. We're joining ourselves together to yeah. be one. And when we do that with Christ in our salvation walk, we do that with each other in our marriage walk as well. I don't know if people really understand the depth of submission. Submission is really actually pretty easy. Yeah. So when Dan says, this is what we're going to do as a family, it doesn't mean that I don't have a voice. Yep. It doesn't mean that I don't have an opinion. I'm still my own person. Yeah. But 
I can say, hey, why are you doing it that way? Yeah. Uh, I don't like that. You know, and mm -hmm. he'll be like, why? Why? Yeah. Tell me what's what's up. Yeah. And then I'll give him another side to it. And he's going, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then or he'll say, no, this is what we're doing. I've already thought this through. This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. And I'm like, fine. OK. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I'm due submission always well. <laughs> No. <laughs> there are times that I'm like, ugh. Yeah. You know, um, I'm a planner, mm -hmm. and Dan is like fly by the seat of his pants, yeah. like, whoa, what are we yeah. gonna do today? Let's just get in the car and go. And I'm like, what? Uh, what time are we gonna be back? When do? We, right. Where are we gonna be? Da, 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 da. And I've had to learn over 23 years of marriage, let that go because yeah. every time I follow Dan, whether I like it or not, kicking yeah. and screaming. Um, I always end up enjoying whatever it is we're doing, and yeah. so I know that's a stupid little thing, but. No, no. You know, it's when you're giving anything that you end up doing that you don't like doing, that's yeah. when submission starts. Yeah. So submission is when you don't want to do something right. that you you don't want to do, yeah. but you do it anyways, that's when you've started submission. Well, and I, I think, excuse me, you yeah. you talked about, uh, and you used the analogy of, of use the word covering. Mm. Uh, and I, I like the analogy that we've seen with like an umbrella. Yep. Right, so there is a sense of coming underneath and, and having a covering under which you are submitting to yeah. and the value of that. So if you can kind of touch on some of that, what what are some of the perks and the value of being mm. under a covering? It's so incredible because I've, I've been under the covering of a boss. I've been under the covering of our church. Mm -hmm. I've been under the covering of God. Yeah. Um, and being under the covering of marriage. Yeah. I mean, there's been some pretty big decisions we've had to make in our marriage. Yeah. Um, things that would affect a ton of people you know, whether it be our family mm -hmm. or our staff, we have like yeah. 187 staff members wow. or something crazy like that. And so when we make these decisions, they don't come lightly, you mm -hmm. know, and we know that there's a price to pay and that there's going to be some fallout mm -hmm. either one way or another. Right. And so when we make these decisions, when I know that Dan has been in the face of God and when I know that Dan is making sure that he takes his time, yeah, I can respect that. Yeah. And then even if I don't understand why he's doing what he's doing, I'm under the covering of that decision. And I have watched this happen, not just with Dan, but with my dad. My dad was a senior pastor who just passed recently, um, you know, of this church. He was a founding pastor. And I remember being in staff meetings. I don't know if you remember this, yeah. but we'd be, he'd be like, we're $150,000 behind. I'm yeah. going to hire three people today. Yeah. And I would just be like, why? Like, I did not understand right. yeah. why he would do these things. And they made no sense to me. But after a while, I started to see God move in it mm -hmm. because he was stepping out in faith. Yeah. And he was declaring to Satan, like, you don't get it, Satan. I'm, I'm going to increase. Right. We're going to build the kingdom. We're not letting Satan take us out. And so I watched my dad. He did that in our own personal family, too. Yeah. Yeah. And so I watched my dad do that. And then now I watched Dan do it. Mm -hmm. And because I've... I've been under the covering of that and yeah. I've had to just be like, ah! it's yeah. like when you're on top of that roller coaster and you're like, uh, yeah. how is this going to feel? You feel like your stomach's going to come out, you know, but then it all turns out well and it was fun and the right. ride was great. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what submission is. Just take the ride, like follow it because why? Because God backs what he says. That's right. You're right. And so there's this authority structure that God created and we as humans want to kick against it. Mm -hmm. We want to push it away. Why? Because we really don't trust God. Yeah. We really don't think God knew what he was doing. Yeah. But the reality is, is if I stay in my lane and I do what God tells me to do as a Christian, mm -hmm. me to do as a wife, and if that's submission, submission to my boss, submission to the authority yeah. over me, submission to whatever, my husband, right? That word submission is a big word because there's actually freedom in it. Yeah. And it covers you and you're protected by it and God will take care yeah. of you that if right you there. are doing your part. Freedom. Free there is freedom in yeah. submission. It's yeah. not shackles. Nope. It's not, I don't have a voice. No. There is freedom and, and liberty and that's why God I feel like so. you shackle yourself if you don't. Right. Oh, well, that's good. Because you've then opened the door for the enemy to come in, mm. and God's hands are now tied for blessing right. Right. and favor. Yeah. So now you've now opened a door. Right. In your marriage, in your home, in your finances. Because you know, you're at saying your God, job. your way isn't really the best way. That's yeah. It's exactly right. Wow. You're slapping God in the face. Well, you. I want to pull out and highlight a comment that you had made, um, and you you gave the example of, as someone who is submitting there is a, a, a step that makes it a little bit easier. And you said, when I know he's been in the face of God. Mm -hmm. And so I know for husbands or yeah. for a leader, whether you're a husband, whether you're an employer, you have some people that you, that you cover. It's one thing, to, it's, it's easier for the people who are following your lead yeah. to step out in faith 
when they know you are following the lead according to how you submitted. Yes. Because we're all submitted. Right. Right. Even as someone who's right. covering, I'm a husband. Right. I am still submitted to right. God. Right. Yeah. And so when I've been in God's face mm -hmm. about something, one, it brings me comfort. It makes it easier to make a decision. Yeah. And then those who trust me can say, I know you've been praying about this. I know I've seen you fast. I've seen you talk about this. Yeah. I know you're not making this flippantly. Yes. And we can move yeah. along. And I love that's why you can have. That's why there's the conversation. Pastor Dan, I don't know if you heard the podcast yet, but he was like, I can count on one hand how many times I've had to just be like, look, submit. Yeah. Everything else has been a, a decision, a conversation. Yes, I make the call. Yes, there's submission. But a lot of it is done in conversation. Right. I think that's a challenge to maybe marriages that it's always just one way and it's always just decide, 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 yeah. submit, submit, submit. Right. It's okay. To, you're not out of order, in other words. No. If you're having a conversation. No, not at all. And I know every marriage is different. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know some people that are probably listening are in broken marriages. Right. Um, maybe their husband isn't saved. Uh, so how do I submit? You do this because God is asking you to do mm. this. You don't do this because he is godly. Right, right. Now, if your husband, and I said this in the message, is asking you to sin or mm -hmm. go against what the word of God yeah. says, I would say, no way, Jose. Right. We don't yeah. do that, right? Yeah. Like, we stay on our lane. Yeah. And we as women have been called to to be nurturers and guide and help and, and come alongside our husbands. Mm -hmm. And that's the role of marriage. Yeah. And so if I am causing my husband ill will, and my me saying, oh, I'm not going to submit to you, and I'm making a stink about it, and I'm making it so hard for him. What's going to happen? I'm breaking him mm. down. That's I'm good. actually not allowing him to be in his role that God has asked him to be. So then guess what happens? I'm then in opposition to Christ. Wow. And I will have to give an account for that one day when I stand before him. Right. It's good. I mean, let's go into eternity with yeah. this. Like, yeah. we will give an account for everything that we do. Yeah. And I don't know if women know how serious that is. Because oh. God takes marriage that serious. Right. And so when I've done that, when I've pushed to get my way or when I've manipulated, because us girls can do that so well, I have had to go and repent. I've had to go and, and I'm so sorry. I will oh. never take that place again. I will never push to get my way again because the Lord so deeply convicted me because oh. then I then didn't just have an issue with Dan. I then had an issue with God. Oh. That's good. Th thanks for sharing that. Pastor. That, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's real. All right. That's, that's real. Like, you know, it's oh, scary you too. know, you're manipulating <laughs> this. You know, it's good. Because I think if, if Christians don't have a fear of God, then they don't, they're not feeling that. Right. And then they're wondering why, Things like their finances are drying up. Their right. marriage isn't working out. Yeah. Well, God didn't come through. No, you didn't come through. Right. We're not doing our part. Right. God gave us everything we need. So good. I mean, right. think about the garden for a second. The yeah. first marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Here's Adam and Eve. Sorry, I could, I could preach no, so much no, about... No, come on. This is good. Here's Adam and Eve. And they're in a garden. God gave them everything they needed. Yeah. When Eve came out of his side, they were actually equal on equal playing ground. There, there was no, like, right. Adam was over her. No. Right. Right. They, they led together in that garden because he needed one comparable to him, mm -hmm. one to bring, be yeah. a helpmate. Yeah. It wasn't until the fall, the one tree mm -hmm. that they were not to touch. Right. How many trees did they have to go past? How many wow. vegetable gardens did they have to go past? How many areas yeah. in this garden that they had everything they needed mm -hmm. did they have to go through and pass to get to the one thing they weren't allowed to have? Yeah. Right? That's just humanity. We want the thing we don't want, we, d yeah. we don't need. Yeah. We yeah. strive so hard, right? To make all the money, to get yeah. the boat, yeah. to get the vacation, yeah. to get the, I don't know, the house. Yeah. Right. But really, are we looking at what we really do have already? Right. You know, and being content with what God actually gave us. And in our marriages, God has placed in us. And I can speak for men only because I've watched my dad, my husband, mm -hmm. all the men in my life, you're a wonderful husband. You have it in you to just step up and be the men. Mm -hmm. you, you love your wives. You love your children. You mm -hmm. guys are godly men. Mm -hmm. It is in you if you really want it. Right. But men have to seek that. Men yeah. have to go after God full-heartedly. Yeah, they have to give us women something to, to follow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now us as women, we are the Proverbs 31 girl. Yeah. I know that you can read those scriptures and they can seem daunting, antiquated, totally. What are you talking about? Like. Yeah. That's not who I am, but it really is who we are. That Proverbs 31 woman isn't somebody we try strive to be. Mm -hmm. It's somebody we actually already are. Yeah. And the closer we get to Christ in our intimacy, in our relationship, yeah. the closer we get to being the Proverbs 31 woman. Wow. 
And so then a husband can love a Proverbs 31 woman, yeah. like the mom was speaking to her son mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And I want my boys, I have two boys, I want my boys to marry someone like that. Yeah. That, that would be the conversations I would have with my boys, right? right? As yeah, a woman. For sure. And so I think that our roles are humongous mm -hmm. in the kingdom, yeah. but they're also a picture of Jesus and us. Yeah. And yet we're always striving for the stupid tree. Yeah. That, why do we want the one when we passed everything we needed? We didn't need it, <laughs> right? right. No, but we good. do that in marriage. Oh, I'm going to go look at some porn because right. I'm not happy with my wife. Or, right. or, or I am content, but I'm still like looking at these things. Right. Or, or there's adultery happening. Or you're playing, you know, having conversations with people at work you shouldn't be having. Or I don't know, but yeah. we, we open doors it's in good. our marriages it's that good. should never, ever be opened. Yep. And that's where the enemy comes to rob, to steal, mm. and to kill, and to destroy. Well, and the doors seem so innocent. They seem so... Yeah, subtle. It seems so silly that I shouldn't follow this person. or it's like That seems so religious. Or like, but it's like you said, it's just a footstool. It's the little footstool. I think we underestimate yeah. uh, two things. We underestimate God's power and grace. We do. But we also underestimate the enemy's willingness mm -hmm. and desire to steal, kill, and destroy yeah. for us. Think, oh, you know, he doesn't... Little yeah. old me is like... He wants whoever, whomever he can have to yeah. devour. And I think we give him too many footstools because in the name of, I don't want to seem so religious. Or mm -hmm. I don't want to, that seems so silly that I mm -hmm. can't do such and such. So that, yeah. that's good. And that was just the first one, Pastor Jess. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I want to get into this next one. Um, you said, uh, let the husbands be head of the home. Mm. Uh, and, and there's that big word there, let. And I think it's important. Because yeah. there is some sense, and I'll, I, I'll, you know, there is, as a man, I know, and for husbands, I can feel when, when things are good with wife and I, and uh, then I feel more confident. If right. things are, then I feel a little bit more like, yeah. oh, you know, like, what am I going to do? But I can't do, I can't look to anyone but God right. for that confidence to do it, because I will have to answer to God. And it won't be like, well, the woman you gave me, she wasn't happy with me that day. <laughs> So I just gave her whatever she wanted. I didn't I, Adam I, do that in the garden? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The woman you gave me. It was her. Yeah. You know, we can't tattletale like that because our job was to make a decision or to lead or be ahead of the home. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side of the, you're saying let because there is um, there is this sense of uh, power or you know authority that yeah. women do carry. Absolutely. And um, you know I, I, I wrote this down because uh, we, we talked about uh, I mean, you have a daughter. I have two daughters. I want to raise daughters that mm -hmm. are strong, mm -hmm. that are driven mm -hmm. to do the things of the Lord, that are not going to wait, especially as young single women, on just things to get done. You know, they're going to go after the Lord. Yeah. So the dichotomy here is how do you raise strong women that mm -hmm. just one day will know to submit? How, they're, they're supposed to turn it, turn it off one moment to the next. What, what would you say is maybe, you I know, think it's simple. Right. We lead our children mm. to Christ and teach so them to have their own personal relationship with Christ. It's good. Because it can't be daddy or mommy's relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I grew up in a pastor's kid's home. My dad would always say, you cannot get to heaven because of us. Right. You have to have your own relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Right? And so for me, I really took that on as a mom and I thought, I have, I remember the Lord sent me home and told me, You're, I'm, I want you to be a stay-at-home mom. Now, I was a working mom full-time. Mm -hmm. I had a babysitter. I had everything I needed. I was like, what? I'm not hearing God because yeah. I, was, I was enjoying yeah. my job. And then I loved my kids, yeah. but the Lord knew that he wanted to bring another child into the mix yeah. and it would have just been really hard. Mm -hmm. And they were in these pivotal times and season. And I see God's hand in it all because... Right. It was right when the, um, you know, the redefinition of marriage was happening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my kids were watching TV. They saw things. And I'm like, if I wouldn't have been in that moment, the Lord told me, go mm -hmm. talk to them about it. Yeah. Work this out in their hearts right now. Yeah. But if I wouldn't have been home and known that they had seen those things, yeah. I could have missed that moment. Right? right. So I got to shape their their understanding of why God says what he says, yeah. why God created these things. Right. Not to be this like big old mean God right. up in heaven saying you can't da da, yeah. da da da, but sin came into this world, 
you know, and, and brought these sinful things into the world. And now my kids have to live with them. Yeah. But I want my kids to know how to live with them, but not be of them. That's good. And so my girl, who is pretty amazing, she's about 19 years old at this point, just finishing up her first year of college. I t bring her home next week. And, um, you know, she's real confident. Mm -hmm. Like, she's been on her own for a year. She's yeah. I call her and she's giving me scripture. She has, a, she picked the right group of friends, right. which praise the Lord, yeah. right? Yeah. We're all praying, God, yeah. please let them not find the wrong right. group of friends. Right. There were a few guys that came into her life and mama was praying them out because I'm like, mm, not good enough, not strong yeah. enough, not, <laughs> you know, like, because there's a specific person that I know God has for her mm -hmm. and whoever that is, I'm praying for you. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And she's, she jokes. She's like, oh, I just tell my friends my mom's praying, you yeah. know, like, because these guys would come in and be gone. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry, babe. <laughs> and so I feel like that maybe it was just that constant teaching. Mm -hmm. Like, even with our boys right now, I have a 14-year-old and I have a 16-year-old. He's about to be a senior this year. And we were having this conversation with them the other day, and it was a hard conversation mm -hmm. to have with yeah. these boys. And I'm like, this is so awkward. I'm a mom, and I don't like, I don't yeah. like this, you know. Yeah. And I just heard the Spirit of God say, but this is your job. You don't do it because it's comfortable or mm -hmm. because it's easy. You don't do it because cause this is convenient, right? And that's mm -hmm. what marriage is. Right. We don't do it because it's comfortable or because it's easy or convenient. No, it's hard work. Yeah. And those open conversations to the beauty of God and what He does in it. And how do I switch my, okay, I'm feeling this pull into my flesh. How do I switch that into my spirit? Mm -hmm. We got to teach our kids how to do that. Right. Right. And yeah. so if I don't know how to do that, though, myself, how am I going to teach my children right. how to do that? And so yeah. that's that's where I think the beauty of marriage and the picture of a good marriage to our children mm -hmm. is is a beautiful picture of Christ in the church. Yeah. And they're going to see this like this beauty and they don't see beauty, but we were created for beauty. We were right. created in a garden. I keep talking about Adam and me, but I mean, that's where it originally was yeah. supposed to be like. Yeah. And so we were made for beauty. Mm -hmm. And yet we live in a very dark, nasty world right. full of sin. Yeah. And so how do we raise our kids? How do we love each other in our marriages so that they see this beauty? And, and we're not just like a one generation, right. you know, church mm -hmm. of family. No, right. but it's a legacy yeah. of our From children serving God. Yeah. Because why? Because God isn't this big old mean guy in the sky. No, he's an actual wonderful God. And mm -hmm. the reason that he says not to do these things is not because he's trying to tell you you're bad, but he's saying that is bad for you because that's not what I made you to be. Right. And that's not how I intended for it to be. So sin has come in and crept into your heart and into mm -hmm. your life. I can help you break free from those things. That's good. And so that's where it's like, I've had to have those conversations. And in marriage, you might have to have those conversations. Yeah. Because what is one person coming in with with baggage mm -hmm. and another person comes in with different type of baggage? Yep. You got to work that out. Yep. No, that's good. I want to I want to go um, a question that came in uh, again. We're talking about the topic of letting the husband be the head of the home. How do you have those communication? How do you have some mm -hmm. of these safe spaces? Mm -hmm. um, because in this letting, you know, there is some of the um, how would you word it? Uh, maybe it hasn't felt safe. For the husband, you know, uh, the husband's yeah. afraid to make a decision. Cause, yeah. Oh, well, last time, I, if I make the wrong one, you're going to let me have it. Or yeah. I, so how do you have some of these sort yes. of conversations? Totally. And I do, I pray that in these Christian homes, they can make this, my family calls it safe talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, some people have taken that and kind of twisted it and made it weird. <laughs> like, but it's not what people have made right, it. it right. Re what really safe talk is, is like, I need to be able to say something that will be hard for you to mm -hmm. hear. But you, I don't want you to get so offended by yeah. it that we can't talk about it. Because right. have you ever been in those yeah. conversations yeah. where it's like, okay, I'm going to go to my brother because God said to, and mm -hmm. then they blow up and you're yeah. like, never did anything get right. fixed out right. of that. That did not go well. You know, like, so that can happen in marriage very easily. Mm -hmm. um, and we can easily offend each other yeah. in marriage. But if you can establish a safe environment for you too, mm -hmm. and, and maybe that needs to be like, not when I'm off work. Yeah. Like right when I've had a long day, but like on the weekend, let's take some time. Let's yeah. give each other like an hour where we're both kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. what happened this week? Right. You know, what, how are you feeling? How let's like check in with each other mm -hmm. where you care about each other mutually yeah. and you want to hear each other on both ends. Mm -hmm. And it may not be fun to hear, 
and you might not like the raw feelings of where they're at. Yeah. I mean, Dan and I have had to have many of these conversations mm -hmm. and I've been embarrassed at times when he's come to me like, oh, I can't believe I made him feel that way yeah. or oh, I can't believe he felt that way. Right. <laughs> like, I'm so annoyed <laughs> right, that right. he feels that way yeah. because that is not what I mean, right. you know? And so like I can get offended at him feeling hurt or him feeling like, hey, yeah. what are you doing, you know? Yeah. So the reality is, is that's a grow up moment for both of us. And I think in a marriage, there always has to be a striving to grow up in Christ together. That's good. That's good. And so maybe you didn't do it well before, but maybe that's how you come at it this time. Hey, mm -hmm. we did not do this well last time we had yeah. a real talk. Yeah. But we need to be able to have a real talk in order for us to be godly yeah. and bring God into that conversation. Because one thing that I can never deny is when, God, when Dan says, but God says for yeah. us to go to our brother, right. you know, and I remember right. one time we were in this situation, not with each other, but with someone else. And it was just getting out of hand. And I remember being so upset. Yeah. And I remember Dan pulling me to the side. He goes, listen, I'm not saying they are right. right. But what I am saying is they're doing what is right because God said that they have to go to the brother and they need to be able to say this. Now yeah. they are not right in what they're doing. And I went, okay. Right. And it just like shut me up. Why? Because I love the word mm -hmm. and I love God. Yeah. So you're right. They need to have a space where they can come. Yeah. Now in marriage or friendship or in with your children. Yeah. They need to have a space that they can come and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. I don't like this. And it could be a total lie. It could yeah. be a total farce. Yeah. It could be something Satan has planted a seed in their head and they really believe right. this is how you feel about them or how you see them yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But Satan does that, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it's horrible how he does that. Mm -hmm. And then we believe it's the truth. And then we call the other person a liar. And it's like, oh my gosh, now where do we go from here? Yeah. That's when you call a pastor and you get somebody in the middle to kind of help mediate right. that yeah. situation. But... Um, in marriage, that can so easily happen. So if you can create with God being the center, you know, I, I saw this little thing on Instagram or somewhere and it was a triangle and it was like the man on one side yeah. of the triangle, the woman on the other side, but God being the center yeah. and it just creating like this mm -hmm. beautiful, strong force that can't yeah. be broken, right. you know? And when we can put Christ in the center of our marriage, mm -hmm. no matter how mad you are, no matter how offended we can get with each other, I think when you know that you know both of you love God, the men should be able to come to the wife and say, listen, you are actually taking my role and you're robbing me of my spot. Yeah. And the wife needs to hear that and feel bad about that. And the wife really needs to think about what am I doing? Like I mm -hmm. need to, why am I in this position yeah. that I feel that I need to take over his role? Has it oh. become a habit yeah. for years? And yeah. so now he's finally stepping up and right. he's finally understanding and he finally has the courage to say, hey, yeah. I don't like this. And the wife just didn't realize that she had been doing that. Yeah. I mean, it might be that simple. Yeah. It might just be unhealthy patterns that they've created mm -hmm. in their marriage over yeah. years. Yeah. And they've got to now be broken down and that will take some time. But if they're on the same path together to do that, mm -hmm. you can. Yeah. So I think it's finding out where this, the root of this is coming That's from, yeah. you know? And so Dan talked to me about that early on. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're undermining me in front of my staff. You're, you're joking with me. And I know you're a teaser, Jess, but it's yeah. hurting my feelings. Yeah. And well, you, you mentioned that in the message and it mm -hmm. made me think of like, um, you know, have you ever been, you've seen someone with their things, right? You, and it's like, oh, if this is their things and they treat it this way, then mm -hmm. they don't mind me treating it that way. So it's like, right. it brings down, like, if you don't value this, yeah. then why would I value, or I'll have as much value as you do, because this yeah. is yours and this is not. You, you know, set that bar. been in someone's car and it's dirty. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to feel bad leaving a wrapper. No. If you've ever been in someone's car that's pristine, like, yeah. you, you wipe yourself off <laughs> you're afterwards. You're making sure there's no right? problems. Because like you, you're like, man, this, this guy cares, <laughs> this guy cares, cares about their car. Yeah. In the same way I can see with our spot. Like, if I'm... Uh, you know, you've always, you've, everyone's been with that couple and maybe you're that couple where you guys are just going at each other the whole dinner and it's kind of oh, awkward. Man. It's like, you so know, like, uncomfortable. And it's like, wait, like, are you joking? <laughs> Can I laugh? Cause the husband or the wife's feeling it, you know, yeah. and you know, it, I, and I've been guilty of that, you know, like I'd say like, Oh, that sounded worse than I meant it. You know, right. you want to take it or back. Or even you two get each other, right. but the people around you don't understand right. how <laughs> intense that is. Cause they're like, that yeah. was bad. Right. You know? <laughs> and, and, and so the point we're talking about is just the value. And, I, and again, yeah. we appreciate your transparency in that, in knowing like, oh man, my words have power. And if I'm undercutting 
their leadership in front of people, mm -hmm. then of course they're going to question their leadership. Yeah. They're going to question who they are as a husband, as a father. Uh, and so, and even their ability as a Christian to speak on the topics, right? right. right? Like, yeah. so then you're going to be questioned about it if if there's that um, unhealthy exchange between you two. Mm -hmm. Like, because it says in the Word of God that our relationships, our marriages, mm -hmm. are a picture of Christ in the church to the world. Yeah. So when we treat each other yeah. bad, yeah. The world is watching going, why are you guys any different than we are? Right. There's no difference. Yep. Have you ever seen Christians drinking, right? Right, right. I, um, we have family that are not saved. Mm -hmm. And they will say to my sister often, right. why would we do this Jesus thing? You guys don't look any different than we do. Look at right. all your pastors drinking. Right. Look at everybody drinking. Right. You guys look the same as us. Right. And it was like, oh my goodness. Like right. We have to understand that who we are in Christ yeah. has to be more than what our desires are in our flesh. Yeah. And that goes for our marriage. That goes for how we conduct ourselves. What do we want the world yeah. to see Jesus as? That's good. Somebody That's good. they can follow. Somebody that is different than what they're living right. in. Something that is doable. Yeah. You know, living a life for Christ. Right. And, that, and that speaks to the, the bigger thing of this. Uh, it is a picture yeah. To non-believers, and I think that's it another is. element. Like, oh man, that's another way, you know. But a lot there's, of pressure. there's grace for that. There is, there is God grace will for give all you grace. Things. Yeah. But I will say this: open conversation with each other, yeah. because when you stop communicating about what is annoying about the parts of your marriage, yeah. whether it be like from finances to in-laws to um, sex to I don't know, there could be so many fights and yeah. arguments yeah. or jobs and how much time are you spending at your job and when are you coming home and right. when are you coming home these things can be what are the contentious places that yeah. want to drive a wedge between you and, and after a while you just get sick of fighting yeah right and so you just get worn down and then you just stop talking you yeah. become roommates and yeah. god never called us to be roommates right, right? right. he called us to love each other yep. to cherish each other mm -hmm. to enjoy each other he wants this beautiful marriage yeah and it's just sad, you yeah. know how sad. No, he wants that. our marriages to work more than we do. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. Well, we're we're cl uh, closing down, Pastor Jess, and but I do want to talk about the, your last point uh, was to love your family and take care mm. of your home, and really you spent uh, a good amount of time just talking about. Really, what I took away was just that creating the atmosphere. Yeah. Right, creating a loving atmosphere, whether it's through decor in the mm -hmm. holidays, or having a clean space. Yeah. Uh, that's a safe place. I, I kind of what I took it, used the illustration yeah. of the lamp and a candle. And again, I just kind of something that's almost serene or peaceful yeah. because there's chaos yeah. all around us. You know, there's chaos at the workplace, regardless of our husbands or our children. They come home from uh, what could feel chaotic, but yeah. they have a space that is safe for them. Uh, now, I, I can already I can already hear, you know, obviously... The different people have different mm -hmm. levels of cleanliness. Yes. I've been to your home. It is spotless. It always makes me feel <laughs> weird coming back to my house. Oh, no. <laughs> See, I don't want to make people no, feel which, weird. But, again, I know, but obviously, I can be secure. Again, there's different seasons. There's, I understand toddler seasons. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we've spent a, a whole day cleaning our home. Oh, I love Five that. Five minutes later, yeah. all the toys are back. Like so. I, I remember that season. I, would tell them, I promise it's clean underneath right. all the toys. Like. So, and, and I know you're not shaming people, but no. really the... the takeaway was just creating that space mm -hmm. whether it's you know because clutter is just is clutter it's not good for our psyche even but really what what is your take for a woman who maybe is not naturally clean or sure. is it or not getting taught. any help or yeah. right, and so what is it always is it just about having it clean what was what if you can even take it to another degree what would you kind of go into there? Because again, I know that you spent yeah. time, it was I mean, mostly the culture and atmosphere. I could talk a whole lot about this right. because I know that there, I have people in my life from all different sides. Right. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm naturally a person of order. Right. I don't know if I was just built that way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm the type of person that when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And right. you can bank on me right. to do it. I right. mean, I was surprised God told me to do that 40 day fast, just juice. And yeah. I did it. Yeah. In fact, I did it longer than 40 days because I was like, I don't want to leave this fast. Right, it was yeah. so good. People were like amazed at mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, why? Right. And then I'm looking at people trying to fast and I'm like, you failed already. It's your first day. <laughs> you know, like, so yes, I am very different in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I just have always, I know this is a cliche, but godliness is next to cleanliness, yeah, yeah, yeah. you right. know, and that there is that 
that glutton like spirit mm. that our world produces mm -hmm. where we want more we want more we want more, yeah. we want more and we become addictive yeah. to either we're hoarding mm -hmm. or we don't we're buying things that we don't really need to buy right. just because we're bored or yeah. because whatever right, right. like Maybe you should read your Bible then. Get off right. the internet and start reading your Bible. You right. know, um, like change some habits mm -hmm. because these things are actually very different. Yeah. They're, they're deeper. Um, my, I have a niece who is a counselor and she's actually going to Northwestern University and she's one of the only Christian in her wow. college. Wow. Um, and she's surrounded by atheists. <laughs> and I'm just so proud of her because she was talking about like how little kids are growing up on their iPads mm -hmm. and what it's creating in yeah. them. And it's scary. Yeah. It's very, very scary. Yeah. But as a mom, I was very intentional about how much screen time my kids could have. Mm -hmm. Even now to this day, yeah. my daughter who's 19 just got Instagram today. Yeah. She was like, all right, I guess yeah. I'm going back on because my friends are all on there. <laughs> da, da. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. You know, but like she hated it and mm -hmm. she actually threw it yeah. out. Yeah. I have a 16 year old boy who's like, I really hate that. I don't right. want it. I don't want to see things I don't need to be seeing. Right. I don't want to get part of people's drama. Right. People don't need to be knowing about my life, right. you know, like, right. so I have very different children in that sense. They right. don't really care. Um, but then I wonder if that's because I didn't have them on screen mm. so much when yeah. they were young. And yeah. we did actually clean the house on a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. And I did make them clean their bedrooms. <laughs> like I did, yeah. Yeah. you know, you have to make your bed. Oh, mm -hmm. you have some time. You've read your Bible already. And we have like 10 minutes before school starts, go start cleaning your room. Right. Um, I will fold clothes and I will put them on their beds. They have to put them away. Mm -hmm. But even if they now, my children help me with the chores. So yeah. it has been a training from very small to now. Yeah. Um, so that I'm not the only one trying to hold down the fort. See, I'm not right. asking women to do everything right. for it's everybody. Good. It's good. That's foolish. Right. Right. We train up a child in the way they should go. Right. Um, so for instance, Micah, my son, he was sick today mm -hmm. and, um, he's part of a football team. They all sweated on each other yesterday. And then he came home and told me everybody was sick. I'm like, great. <laughs> and so he was up in the middle of the night. We laid yeah. hands on him. Yeah. He's already feeling better, but he was home today and I was studying for tomorrow morning's message. And I just felt like, you know what? I'm going to take. Um, my lunch break and I'm going to make him some chicken noodle soup. Do mm. I have what I need? Right. I went and got everything that I needed. Yeah. And, um, and that, hold on one second. Yeah. Should we pause this? <laughs> this is the real Just side of, of, uh, <laughs> cut. We're in Brian's office. So okay. <laughs> we just woke up on one of our staff members. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I made him, <laughs> I should answer it. Who is it? Hey, I'm in the middle of recording a podcast right now. <laughs> Okay, love you too. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> we should keep no, this. Yeah, part. we will. We will. This is real. <laughs> so I decided to make some chicken noodle soup. So I yeah. made it for him today. You know, I mean, I'm constantly thinking about how I can help my family. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that would have started unless I created that pattern when they were young. Right. So if you don't like cleaning, these I have tips for everybody. Right. Right. Try and do a load of laundry a day. Mm -hmm. One load a yeah. day. Yeah. Otherwise, it will get, it's crazy. It will overtake your home. Right. And everybody will be like, I have no chonies for tomorrow. Right. And I need my soccer outfit for, you know, whatever. Right. And you will just be like so mad at each other. And what does that do? That causes this tension in yeah. the home. Right. But if you can run a load a day, that helps. Yeah. Run a load a day of dishes. Yeah. Like, and listen, I used to be the girl who hated dishes in my sink when I woke up in the morning. Yeah. I've had to let that go. Yeah. If I wake up in the morning, I read my Bible and there's dishes in the sink and I have time, I then go do the dishes. Right. I have learned to not be so crazy about it because yeah. I did used to make myself crazy yeah. and make my family nuts. So I don't, keeping a home <laughs> brings order, but it also, it puts a priority on things that God cares about. Yeah. He's not a God of chaos. Yeah. He's not a God of disorder. Right. He's not a God that created ugly. Yep. God created everything beautiful in his time. He had everything in order. I mean, look at him and Adam got to name all those animals. How yeah. cool was that moment? Right. I would have loved to have been there to be like, why did you think of the word giraffe? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so yeah. God is into every part of our home. Mm -hmm. God is into every meal we make yeah. and what we put in our bodies. Right. I'm constantly thinking about, I still juice for my family. Even though I'm not fasting anymore, right. I juice for them. Right. Why? Because I want Micah to be healthy, because I want Titus to be yeah. healthy. I need Chloe to be healthy. Yeah. Why? Because if this stupid sickness comes back around, right. I want my kids' bodies to be strong. Yeah. Because that's God made those right. things and we can put them in us. So those I think those things are important to Christ. Yeah. 
but it takes an attitude of not, Ugh, I'm so annoyed by this, and this is so stupid, but uh, I'm going to work on this. Well, I love what you said, and you brought some of the examples that you've seen. Just, again, we're talking about creating atmosphere. Yeah. And, and cleaning your house is just part of it. Part of right? it. Right? Diet is just part of it. Yeah. But what you're talking about is kind of creating this atmosphere. Because even if you have time of, of a messy thing, is there love in your home? Is there joy? Yeah. Is there laughter? Because yeah. on the other side, it can be so stringent. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've known people that they now have dirtier homes because when they were kids, yes. their parents were so militant about yes. it. There was no love. There was no right. time for anything because any... You know, we're not going to play a game because it creates a mess. No. And so we're so... Yeah, so we don't do that. But you talked about... <laughs> so here's... We leave have the a, game you out. You have a college student. Yeah. But now, and they don't have to come home every weekend, but they choose. Why? Because there's joy. Mm -hmm. There's peace that you've created. And, and mm -hmm. guess what? You can speak into your children's life because you've created a space, a, an atmosphere that is safe, that is loving. Yeah. That is, you know... And so the, I think that's really the heart of what and you were talking about. And everything I do is for my family. Right. 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 Because that is my job as a woman. Right. Like I think about how can I make my husband's day better? Right. How can I make my kids day better? Like how can I create a home that brings beauty to God yeah. and beauty to them? Right. So that one day when they get married, they want to create this in their homes. Yes. Right. And one day when they get married, they're going to look for a, a wife like their mom. Right. You right. know. Um, and so these are things that are important because I've been in conversations with boys that are like, I wish you were my mom. Right, right. I would, they'll come to my house and they'll be like, I wish you were my mom. I wish I was part of the Roth family. And right. it's like, oh, right. you know, like, I don't know what's happening in their home. So I just start praying for them. But I don't want to create a place where people don't feel safe. Yeah, of course. I want to, and I don't want to also create a place where people can't feel like they can be themselves. Yeah. My kids kick their shoes off. Mike mm. walks around with no shirt on right, all the time. Right. They eat yeah. and pig out and they yeah. spread it out everywhere. Right, right. But you know, at the end of the night, they pick up after themselves. They throw their trash away before they go to bed. Mm -hmm. They fold their blankets. And why? Because right. they take care of their stuff. Yeah. Now their rooms, I don't get on them <laughs> during the week. Right. I don't. Yeah. You know? But in the weekend, I'm like, hey, yep. it's time to put your stuff away. It's time to... Because yeah. I know all week they're working. Yeah. All week they're in sports. They're at yeah. church. They're yeah. at school. They're doing homework. They're doing projects. But on the weekend, you have a little bit more time. You need to pick up. Yeah, that's good. So I'm trying not to be that like Nazi mom, no, I you know, it. like, no, for sure. because I do have friends, yes, right. that have those moms and mm -hmm. they felt like their childhood was robbed Yes, because they always had a clean mm -hmm. and that's not fun. Yeah. 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 Well, Pastor Jess, thank you. And again, it was an amazing message. And I know this message was not just for wives, whether you're single, whether you're getting yeah. married later in life and yeah. you're learning some of these things, yeah. whether you're a husband or a man. Uh, we really can learn so much of the atmosphere we're creating, the conversations we need to have. So thank you, Pastor Jess. Again, Rock Church family or anyone love listening, leave your comments, leave your questions. We'll love to follow up with you and we look forward to seeing you. Make sure to be at the weekend sermons or messages when you can. And then next week we'll be posting Ooh, online. It's going to be good. Yeah, love you Bye. guys. Bye.